Hi everyone, this is Reggie. Welcome to my channel. Um, I just want to say really quickly, I'm sitting in my car right now. I recorded the video that I um, wanted to do for today sitting outside in one of my favorite spots by the lake. But I did not realize how windy it actually was. And so I wanted to apologize because I don't um, do my videos from a prepared script I completely you know just free talk and I thought oh no I should do this video again because the wind is pretty strong but I didn't think I'd be able to say the same thing as well as I did the first time so I want to just apologize for the wind and hopefully you can enjoy the video with the wind all right, thank you. Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. My name is Reggie, and I am a late diagnosed autistic adult. And first of all, I want to thank everyone who has liked and subscribed and commented on my previous video. And I'm very, very grateful to all of you. It's because of your likes and subscribes that we can get this word out there and um, I invite all of you who have not yet liked or subscribed to please do so as well. Thank you so much. I really am grateful for the love and support that I have received to do this and uh, I can't do it without you guys so we're in this together. So today I want to talk about a concept that um, might be new to some of you but I think it's very, very common in the autism community, or the autistic community, rather. When I talk about different concepts, like the one I'm going to talk to you about today, and even the energy management concept that I talked about in my last video, as you get to know me and as I share more of my life with you, these concepts are going to come up a lot. The reason that they come up a lot is because they really influence every single area of my life. And so as I share more about my life with you, these concepts and these terms will keep coming up and, and you'll be able to understand them much more deeply and from many different perspectives. So today, the concept I want to talk to you about is what I call age functioning levels. What I mean by that is that as an autistic person, I tend to have very, very different functioning levels depending on what's going on and depending on the nature of this, you know, the, the circumstance or situation that I'm in and whatever my brain has to process in that particular situation. I also want to give you a little bit of background information that some of you may already know, but for some of you this might be new. When we're talking about autism, we're talking about a developmental disability. And it's really important to understand what this term actually means. And so, of course, autism encompasses a lot of different things but one of the very specific reasons that it is a developmental disability by definition is because of how the brain actually develops in the womb and shortly after when you have a neurotypical baby or typically developing child with a neurology that is developed within the parameters that we consider clinically typical. What we find is that the brain develops evenly across the pretty, pretty much. So there might be slight variances here and there, but for the most part, we have a brain that is developing evenly. All the different parts of the brain are kind of together. That's 
are milestones. That's why we can say at two years old, a child should be doing this, at six years old, a child should be doing that, and so on and so forth. But what happens in development with an autistic brain is that each part of the brain develops separately and distinctly from other parts. Now, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, you know, I'm not anything like that, but I have done ample research. Um, I'm not going to, you know, list everything that I've researched in the videos because I research all the time, but if you want more information about how this actually works, I definitely invite you to go and, 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 and learn and research this. So, in a nutshell, basically what happens is that the brain of an autistic person will develop not uniformly, but certain parts of the brain will develop much faster and much more intensely, and other parts of the brain will develop slower and will cap at a much lesser age, basically. There was a study done by Dr. Margaret Bauman, and I, I don't know the year of the study, but from the footage it looks like it was probably in the late 60s and she had done an autopsy study where she had compared autistic brains to neurotypical brains and what she found in the autistic brains was particularly in the limbic system this is one of the things she found she found several things but one of the things she found was that particularly in the limbic system of the autistic brain the neurons were too many and they were too small. And what that means is that the limbic system of the autistic brains were basically the limbic systems of children. Now the limbic system of the brain is a big, big part of where emotional control happens, where it's kind of like the emotional headquarters. And that is why what we find with a lot of autistic people is that we are emotionally much younger than our actual chronological ages. So I'm going to talk about myself. I am 55 years old. I hit the speed limit this year. And intellectually, analytically, I am very much an adult. As, as you can see. But emotionally, because of the way that my limbic system formed and, and different parts that are attached to the limbic system, and also because of other, other uh, you know, traumatic experiences that I may have had that, that also influenced this, I stopped my emotional development at the age of about four years old. So when I am dealing with processing my own emotions or when I am in a very emotionally strong situation, I will process that and I will respond as a four-year-old child. That part of me will never get older than that. I will always be a four-year-old when I'm dealing with my own emotional content. Now that's very different from when I am, for instance, talking to someone about something they have gone through emotionally or that they're going through because I have the ability to be extremely empathetic and to respond to their emotional situation from a much more mature perspective. And that comes from being analytically mature. But when I'm dealing with my own emotions and what I feel and how I respond, it is literally talking to a four-year-old child. And those people who know me a little bit more intimately and who see that part of me and some of them see that part of me on a regular basis they will attest that yes it is if if they did not know me if they did not um, 
if they had never seen me, they would probably swear that they were talking to a four-year-old child. I've actually had that happen, where the four-year-old part of me has answered the phone. And the person on the other end is asking me to get my parents and asking where my parents are. So what happens when I'm in this mode is I'm not acting childish. I am literally that age. Now socially, I'm also very much younger. So socially, I'm about, I would say I function at about a 10 year old level. And what that looks like for me is that when I am in a situation where the the uh, dominant aspect of that situation is social, it's very, very difficult and draining and overwhelming and exhausting for me to really relate to people on an adult level socially. I can do it if I have to, but I can't sustain it. I can only do it for little bits of a t- at a time. And it leaves me incredibly drained and exhausted to the point where I probably won't be able to function for a few days afterwards. But if I'm hanging out with a bunch of 10 year olds and I can just kind of relax and just chill out with them, it's much more natural to me. It's much more instinctive to me and it's it's not an effort. And it just feels kind of right. And when I come home from that situation, I'm not drained and wiped out and completely incapacitated like I would be if I were socializing for a length of time with people my own chronological age. And in my talks with other autistic people, I've noticed that many, many, many of them, in fact, most of them have a very similar profile. The actual age ranges will change. Like one of my good friends, she's autistic and her chronological age is, I believe it's right right around 30. But yet her emotional age is six years old. Her social age, probably around like young teen as well. I have another good friend who is closer to my age chronologically. He just turned 52 and his emotional age is seven and his social age is probably around like maybe, I don't know, like mid-teens. So it's very, very common. Um, Another friend of mine, she's also autistic. She is, I believe, 37 this year. And she's a little bit older emotionally. Her emotional age is probably around 14. And her social age is probably right around like 16 or 17 or so. So I have parents talk to me about their kids and they say, oh, you know, my kid, he's, he's, you know, 16 or 17 or 22 or whatever. But yet, emotionally, it's like, I don't understand. He's, he, he, he wants to watch Sesame Street or he's, you know, he's, he acts so immaturely. And what I have to explain to them is that he's not acting immature. That's the age that he's actually functioning in or functioning at in that situation. And this is very important to understand because so many times we get accused or disciplined for acting immaturely or responding in a way that neurotypicals don't expect. Responding in a way that they think, 
man, that's not appropriate. But the truth of the matter is, is that if my emotional functioning age is four and my social functioning age is 10, when I am in those situations where that functioning part is dominant, that is exactly how I'm going to act. That is exactly how I'm going to respond. I can't change that. I can't do anything about that. If I had an intellectual challenge, what we used to clinically call mental retardation, nobody would reprimand me or criticize me for acting mentally much younger than my chronological age. They would just say, this person has an intellectual disability and that's just the way this person is and that is how we have to relate to this person. But for someone like me, who sometimes can appear incredibly mature, incredibly intellectual, incredibly analytical, it's very difficult for people to say, oh, right now, I have to relate to her like a four-year-old or like a 10-year-old. And what they'd rather do is say, stop acting like a four-year-old, stop acting like a 10-year-old. And what they don't realize is when they tell me to stop acting that way, it does incredible damage in so many ways. First of all, it does tremendous psychological damage. It does tremendous emotional damage. It's actually very traumatic and it's actually abusive because this is how I am designed. And what I'm being told is that my authentic design is not socially acceptable. And that I have to act in a way in which I am not designed or created to act just so that the person I'm with is not uncomfortable. That is incredibly cruel and it is incredibly damaging and that damage never goes away. And when you are treated that way every day for decades and decades, it does several things. First of all, it teaches you that your existence is not acceptable. It teaches you that you have to have other people's permission to exist. That is cruelty beyond comprehension. The second thing it does is it causes a psychological stress. And that stress turns into PTSD. And that PTSD is very subtle, but it accumulates over the decades. And that kind of PTSD and that kind of stress, it's, you can't really be healed from it because it's a continuing thing. It doesn't stop. People never stop treating you that way. And that kind of stress can manifest in physical symptoms. It can cause not only anxiety, not only depression, which can be very serious, um, it, it, you know, teaches people to mask and it has now been found that masking is a very strong link to suicide in autism. But that kind of stress can also cause things like autoimmune issues. It can cause things like gastrointestinal issues. It can cause sleep issues. It can cause neurological issues. Stress and specifically stress that is daily and, and, and continuous and that you really can't do anything about because it's not something you have control over. You don't have control over people treating you that way. That can cause neurological issues. 
And as we age as autistics, we start to develop neurological issues. We start to develop, you know, health issues, autoimmune issues, gastrointestinal issues, respiratory, all kinds of issues. And a lot of times it's difficult for us to understand why are we having all this stuff happening? And we go to the doctor and the doctor's like, oh, I don't, I don't understand why you have this. I don't understand why you have that. I, I go through to so many doctors and they, they don't understand the kind of neurological issues that I'm having or the kind of, you know, things that are going on with me. And I intuit, now again, I'm not a doctor, so I can't speak from a medical perspective, but I believe intuitively that I am having a lot of the issues that I'm having because of the stress and the daily trauma that I'm experiencing because people cannot accept that I am designed the way that I'm designed. And that is very, very important. It's very important that we start to look at autistic people not as disordered, but as a different design. And when we start to respect that, and we start to understand that, we then normalize it. We're now at a time where we're beginning to have more awareness. People are starting to understand things a little bit better, but we have to get to where these kinds of things are normalized. Because once they're normalized, we will stop having as much bullying and rejection because we won't seem as weird or as scary. Now, we also have to be careful because we don't want, um, we don't want resources and help and um, services to be taken away because we normalize our design. We still need help. We still need accommodation. We still need services. We still need resources. And more than ever, as we age and as we deteriorate. One of my favorite YouTubers, she's an autistic YouTuber. Her name is Carol Bird. And a shout out to Carol. I love your videos. You are awesome. And your, your content is great. And I encourage everyone to check out her videos. I, her um, channel is called Mindful Divergence. And one of the videos that she had done a little while back, she had talked about, should we or should we not remove the word disorder? You know, should we, should we uh, consider autism to be a disorder? And she made a very, very good point. She said, if you stop calling it a, a disorder, you might lose the services and the help that you're getting for being autistic. You know, if it's no longer considered a disorder or a disability. And unfortunately, that might be true. That might be the case. What I would like to propose is that we think about autism kind of like the way that we respect the native tr cultures in this country. What I mean by that is if you are a Native American, that now entitles you to a lot of help and resources that you would not be able to get otherwise. And I think that's really fantastic because they are getting help not because they're disordered, but because they are Native American. I believe in that, I support that. I think that's really good. 
And I would love it if autistic people could be considered the same way. That we know that because we are autistic, it's not that we are disordered. It's that the society that has been created is not designed to support the needs of people like us. So it is very important that we continue to get the help in the, in the services and, and that we continue to create a balance so that we can all survive and thrive in a society. But what I would like to suggest is that rather than saying you should have services for being autistic because you are disordered, we should be thought of as we should have services for autistic people because they are designed differently and because the situation that we have in society now doesn't support their ability to thrive. And if we think of it this way, we can start to remove the stigma and replace it with something much more productive. So I hope that this can give you something to think about. I hope that you can enjoy this beautiful lake where I am here today. It's one of my favorite spots to come and just relax. So thank you again for your support and please like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye-bye.